Very early in most statistics courses, we learn something about meshes of central tendency and meshes of dispersion and about charts to graphically represent data. Box plots are a mix of the three because they show the center of a dataset and its dispersion in graphic form. In the end, a box plot looks somewhat like this, admittedly a bit weird, but pretty easy to create and read if you know how. It is also very useful, in particular if one wants to compare the distribution of several datasets. For example, when you want to compare the impact of a fertilizer on the growth of plants, or the physical fitness of students from different school classes, or the volatility of commodity prices in different markets. Joey at the moment is most interested with something else, and that is trading of office utensils to business customers. His sales are going well, but sometimes it seems like he has to wait quite some time before he's getting paid after a delivery. That can cause problems as he needs cash flowing back in on time so that he can pay his suppliers. And although he keeps selling products, Joey feels like he's running out of liquidity. To get a better understanding of the situation, he wants to analyze the payment behavior of his main customers. From his records, he knows how many days it took them in the past to pay for their purchases. Although the dataset Joey is dealing with is not overly large, most people will find it hard to read something meaningful from it straight away. As an initial step towards an understanding of the data, we could work out an average time for payments, for example, the arithmetic mean. However, for box plots, we use an even simpler approach and look for the middle value that splits a dataset into two halves. Such a value is called median. More accurately, the median is the value for which it holds true that at least one half, i.e. 50% of the data is smaller or equal, and at least 50% of the data is greater or equal. Let's take a look at the blue customer first. To get the median, we first order all values from smallest to largest. Now we can easily see that the value in the middle that splits the data into two halves is 28. So the median time before payment for the blue customer is 28 days. When we order and look at the number of days the orange customer took to pay his bills, we find that there is no exact middle value because we have an even number of data points. In principle, any value between 43 and 45 days would fit the definition of the median. However, by convention, one takes the average of the two middle values by adding them and then dividing by two. The median number of days to pay for the orange customer is 44 days. Also, note that the orange customer took 48 days to pay his bill twice, which is why we also put down and counted that value twice. Every single data point counts irrespective of whether it occurs one or multiple times. Now, let's plot all values for the blue and the orange customer against a number line. That helps us already to understand how the data is distributed. However, data sets are typically much larger than what we have here, to an extent that you can barely see anything between all those dots. Therefore, a box plot represents only a few values and the first one is, you guessed it, the median and we draw a vertical line where it is located. 28 days for the blue customer and 44 days for the orange customer. Two additional values that are also useful to know and easy to figure out are the smallest and the largest value in each set. They both get a vertical line too. And believe it or not, we're just two values away from completing the box plot. To get the median, we asked for the value that splits the dataset into the lower and the upper half. Similarly, 
We could ask which value would split the data set so that at least 25% of the values are smaller or equal and at least 75% are larger or equal. That value is called lower quartile. Let's find the blue customer's lower quartile. For blue, we have nine data points. 25% of nine is 2.25. To make sure we get at least 25%, we need to round that value up to three. The third value in the ordered data set must be the lower quartile, and that is 24 days. Let's check if that meets the definition. Three out of nine are smaller than or equal to 24. That's 33% and a bit more than 25%, therefore meets the definition. And seven out of nine values are larger than or equal to 24. That's about 78% and meets the definition too. Let's take a look at the orange customer. 10 values. 25% of 10 is 2.5. We need to round that up to 3. The lower quartile must again be the third value, which is 30 days. Checking again. 3 out of 10 values are smaller than or equal to 30. That's 30%. And 8 out of 10 values are larger than or equal to 30. That's 80%. The lower quartile, 24 days for the blue customer and 30 days for the orange customer, get a vertical line as a mark in the box plot. There is one value missing to complete the box plot, and that is the so-called upper quartile, which is the value that splits the data set so that at least 75% of the data are small or equal, and at least 25% of the data are larger or equal. Let's take a look again at the blue customer. 75% of 9 values are 6.75. Therefore, the seventh value, that is 45, must be the upper quartile. And for the orange customer, 75% of 10 values are 7.5 values. Rounding up to 8 tells us that the eighth value in the ordered row, 48 days, is the upper quartile in the orange dataset. If you wish, you can pause the video here and check whether the values we've identified in fact meet the definition of the upper quartile. The upper quartiles get marks as well, and as far as the box plot is concerned, we have all we need, because the rest is just decoration. And that is, we connect the end of the lines for the lower and the upper quartiles, which gives us a box. And then we draw a connection between the lines for the smallest value and the lower quartile, and between the upper quartile and the largest value in the middle of that box. These lines are called whiskers. And that is the box plot. Simply speaking, the box plot does nothing else than representing the values that split a data set into four segments that each contain about 25% of all values. So here's a little request from my side. If you find this video useful, please like and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me justify making more videos. Now back to the box plots and let's repeat the process for the green customer. And also for the red customer, where we have a special situation. For the red customer, Joey has collected 12 data points. 25% of 12 is 3, an integer. In fact, the third data point, or any value between the third and the fourth data point, would meet the definition of the lower quartile. However, to get consistent box plots, in such cases we, by convention, Locate the lower quartile in the middle between the integer at a 25% point and its successor, which is 21 days. Again, the median is between two values. And so is the upper quartile between the value at the 75% point and its successor. Now that we understand how box plots are created, 
we also know how to read them and can compare payments. For example, we can see that the quickest payment came from the red customer. However, the median suggests that on average the green customer delays payments the least. The green customer in general seems to be quite reliable, paying within a relatively small time window after receiving the bill. Clearly, there are problems with the blue and the orange customer. They both exhibit large variations and it can take quite long before they pay. 50% of the orange customer's payments take at least 44 days. The red customer, however, is a bit weird. We see that 50% of all payments come in between 19 and 31 days. But the remaining 50% are spread across a wide range on both ends. To get a better understanding of what's going on below the lower and above the upper quartile, we can use a modification which has been suggested by the statistician John Tukey and highlights so-called outliers. We take the width of the box, that width is called interquartile range, and multiply it with 1.5. Now, as a rule, the upper whisker is drawn only to the largest value within that 1.5 interquartile range of the upper quartile. Any greater value gets a separate marker. Similarly, the lower whisker is drawn only to the smallest value within the 1.5 interquartile range of the lower quartile. And any value smaller than that gets a separate marker. That way, it becomes obvious that in fact the red customer paid most of the time within a very reasonable time window and that there has been one exceptionally prompt payment and one exceptionally delayed payment, which might have been a one-time omission. Now, of course, we have to check all other box plots for outliers too. However, it turns out that there aren't any. So this is how box plots are being created. I thank you for watching and I hope to speak to you soon in my next video.